Good morning, brethren. Well, brethren, this is what's going on. <laughs> so much is going on, and I thought that I had the next section of the notes on the whatever uh, on um, a tale of two cities done, and it turns out that I didn't have it done. So I'm going to just start out by chatting with you, and we'll see what the Lord gives us for a message this morning. I'll start by telling you what's going on in the ministry. Excuse me, there's still so much going on. I think we moved in about the middle of March. So it's about six weeks. It seems like we're here forever, doesn't it? <laughs> it's about six weeks. I'm still not settled. I, Susan seems to me to be, are you settled? Would you say? She's going yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah still. Um, we're not settled. I, I'm not settled. I'm still oh, still working on the electronic equipment. There's still work to be done on the electronic equipment. And then there's the war with Infinite Media, the people who designed the, our network for us. And yesterday was Administrative Professionals Day, so I took the office, the brethren that work in the office here, out for dinner. And we had a very interesting dinner, and then there was ministry at the end of dinner. And uh, But the big thing on my mind was that last Sunday, the air conditioner wasn't working. And we were very uncomfortable, so we're going to have a problem broadcasting if we don't have an air conditioner. And I know that you, the brethren are expecting a message, they expect to be fed twice a week. So that is the most heavy thing on my mind, is what to do about the air conditioning. And um, so the first thing that I did was I called up the man. This, the, where, we're, where we're renting, it's, an, it's a new rental, the, the, it's a new landlord that purchased the building. And from what I understand, he's really a very decent man. He, he renovated the building, he put in a lot of, he put thousands of dollars into renovating this building. And there's a, a four, four zone air conditioning, heating air, heating air conditioning units called HVAC units in four different, four different units and four different zones. Because there are four zones to the building. There's the main office where we work, then there's a middle room where we have where Jay sits right now because he's doing, Jay, and, and Jason June share it. June is here once a week to work on the, um, on the shipping and Jace is doing the video clips. And so he needs, so he needs to be, he, the sound that he works with needs to be closed off. So there's a door, that middle room, there's a door on both sides of him. And then after that, there's the back room where we have the, the water cooler and the ref refrigerator and a microwave and, and the, the, the cleaning equipment. And, you know. and then there's, this is, a, we're upstairs right now, I'm talking to you from the loft. It's a really sweet little loft, it just really is. And uh, the loft is in two sec sections. I'm up here sitting here and, and June and, and Susan are down there, are like two steps down. It's a really sweet little room, I love it up here. So this, it was this room that the, when, when, I, when I first saw the building with the real estate, I really liked it, but I didn't know where we would be able to do the broadcasting from. So it was two days later after we had seen several other properties that I woke up in the morning with the thought that we could broadcast from the loft. And then we came to look at the material, the, the premises again. I had called the, the, the real estate and asked if we could look at the premises again. And I, I just wanted to look at it again, but we walked in here and the anointing was so strong, I just wound up committing to the lease before we left. So this is the premises that the Lord has given us. And everybody that has ever stepped in here so far just loves it. And that's because the anointing is here. It's a cute little place, but the excuse me, the anointing is here. Even the air conditioner man that was here yesterday commented. He said, "This is a nice room." And the anointing probably touched him. So there, this loft has its own HVAC unit, and it wasn't too wasn't too warm during the winter. But see, I'm, what's behind me right now? This is an attic that's behind me. 
So I was a little cold in the winter because there's no heat at all in the attic. We have, Jay's put a little um, uh, insulation behind me, but my back was very cold. So we have to decide what we're going to do about that. And maybe he could, uh, but of course, we're not worrying about the winter anymore. And then we had that one warm day last Sunday, and we would just die in up here. So this HVAC unit that's supposed to be both hot and cold, it wasn't working. So I called up the man that installed all four, because everything's new. The units are brand new. The new landlord redid the whole place. Everything's brand new. The building's not brand new, but there's new sheet, uh, new sheet, oh, sheet wall, is that what it's called? Sheet rock. Sheet rock, thank you. <laughs> new sheet rock, and, and the air conditioning units are all brand new, unless he bought them used, which I don't think so. They're supposed to be brand new. So I called him up, I just assumed that it wasn't powerful enough to, to cool this area. See, we should never make assumptions, brethren, never. Okay. And I said to him, what are my options? What are our options? And it turns out that our options are, are putting in a whole new unit. And I, I really, I, I really, I, I shouldn't have done what I did. I, I put my thinking, I put words in his mouth, which you should never do. And I said, well, I guess when they put in that unit, they figured it was just from one person up here, you know. Why would I even say that to him, you know? So he picked up on it and he said, oh yeah, well, it was just for one person. And he got back the next day, he said, these are your options, $4,500. Was it $4,500 or $5,500? No, $4,300. $4,300 to upgrade the air conditioning, heating air conditioning unit in this little loft up here. And the guy yesterday, he said it was about 350 square feet. I think that's what he said, yeah. Uh, $4,500, dollars 4, you know. So, I mean, that's just really crazy for us to be spending that kind of money. The, the landlord should provide an air conditioner. So I called, I had called another, serve another person that sells the same things. And, and the man that came yesterday, he, I really liked him. He was very nice, you know, and he saw this unit and he said, well, what's wrong with it? Did he say how many BTUs this was? Or did he say how many square feet this unit is supposed to be? Did he say? I'm pretty sure he said it was 1,800 and it should be adequate for this space. Well, I was researching yesterday that 1,800 BTUs should cool this place. So, so something's, something's wrong. And uh, one of the things that's wrong that, that is that it's located in the wrong place. Because this, this is a, a loft, so there's an open staircase that comes up. The, the, the air conditioning unit is, how can I explain it? This, the, the, the room is, is longer than it is wide, okay? So the length is this way, Susan and June are in front of me, and the width is from my left hand to my right hand. And the staircase is right here by my right hand. So the unit is on this wall to, to the left of me, and it's blowing right towards the staircase, instead of blowing the length of it from June, who's under the window, towards me, it's blowing the width of it, it's blowing into the open lattice of the staircase and the wall, it's blowing this way, you know, so nothing's coming this way, okay, and most of the air is being wasted, going that way and cold air goes down, so it's blowing over the staircase and it's dropping, yeah. and the room is not air conditioned or heated. So, and also, he turned it on and he, he said it was cool, but not cold. So, he suggested that we get the unit checked to see if it, there's any refrigerate, refrigerant in it or if it needs to be charged. But, and to, to, re, to relocate it on the back wall so that it blows this way instead of this way over the staircase and dropping, he wanted fifteen hundred. He said fifteen hundred dollars for that, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And so, of course, if I had anyone do it, the, really the one to do it would be the guy who put it in in the first place. So I guess that's an that's an option, but it's a it's a lot of money. You know, the, the the alternative is a window air conditioner, which is going to cost us uh, probably five hundred four four to five hundred dollars. Uh, you can get them for less than that, but probably three to five hundred dollars. But I, I would want to make sure that it was going to heat, that it was going to cool. So it, at least four hundred dollars. So, 
So we're talking about an additional thousand dollars to move in and put it on the wall where it should have been in the first place. Um, and then there's problems with that too, you know, if we put it on that wall over there, June's sitting right in front of it. I guess she'd have to, you wouldn't want it on her back, so I guess she'd have to move to the right a little, and it would be right on your back too, you know. Mm -hmm. So basically that's what it looks like, you know. Um, even if they make it colder, let's say it's the refrigerator, refrigerator and they make it colder, we have to do something because it's blowing this way <laughs> and the people that are sitting this way are not getting any air conditioning or heating. So we're planning on putting some kind of uh, artificial wall. It's the, the staircase goes down over here and there's a rail staircase. Just to my right, there's a staircase going down and a rail. A lattice rail with op posts and opening, and the air's just going right through, hitting the wall and dropping. So we're going to p cover up that op those open spaces in the in the staircase, and so that it won't, so that at least it'll hit, it'll, it won't. It's going, it's going through the lattice, hitting the wall and dropping, because that's the big empty space where the staircase is. If we put up. What, what are we going to put up, sort of an artificial wall that's going to like fill in where the slats are? Yeah. So when it hits that, then hopefully it'll go that way. It'll, if, if it hits a wall like this, it'll go that way and that way. It'll have to go in one direction or the other. You know? And the other option is to put a fan in, in, front of that, in front of it so that it blows this way. So if we put a fan <coughs> in front of it that blows this way, it's still not cooling that area back where June is, you know. So that's all artificial possibility. But from my from my my research last night, eighteen thousand fifteen thousand BTU should be enough. Mm -hmm. So eighteen thousand should be plenty. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, it's not working properly. Yeah. It's not working properly. So I called up the uh, the air conditioner guy, which uh, I, I I tried to try the integrity of the people, you know. I, when I called him, I didn't have the information that I just shared with you. What I learned last night was that 15,000 BTU should be more than enough, even possibly 12,000 could, could be good enough. And that's an 18,000 BTU. Why is he talking about selling us another unit? For forty-three hundred dollars, he should have been saying to me that should be working eighteen thousand BTU. That's not for just one person, Sheila. Why do you think it's just for one person? Oh, that's eighteen thousand BTU. That should be covering seven hundred and fifty square feet, and the room is three hundred and fifty square feet. So it's not working properly. So I called him up. I left a message on his phone, but he went on vacation. Everything is delays, delays, delays. Well, you all know that. So I left a message that we want him to test check the air conditioner and just check the refrigerant and see if this and I, if see if it's charged properly. And I sent an email to the landlord telling him that it's not working properly. Makes me wonder if the others are working properly. Yeah, we haven't turned those on yet. And before we moved in here, I asked the landlord about it and he's a very has a lot of integrity. He called up the air conditioner guy and had him to go and and the air conditioning guy. I met the air conditioning guy out here. His name is Kevin. And he said he... Me? Yeah? Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but are you broadcasting? We were, we were, there was a glitch. It's on now. And so as, as Susan says there was a glitch. Really, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to call on the telephone. Everybody... Oh, I'm sorry. If you want to call into the meeting, you don't interrupt the speaker. You call to the technician on the telephone. Okay, now, I've been telling people this for years, okay? Please, don't do that again. Okay. I mean, brethren, you're all adults here. You just really need to start acting like adults. Rita's not the only one that did this happen from other people, too. You all need to start being adults, you know. And, and, and cooperate with us and not make things more difficult for us. 
Do they have the new, have you sent out the new phone? Uh, no, no. So they don't have the Okay, so on tomorrow, first thing tomorrow morning, Susan going to see, was going to send out. It's a different phone number. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I guess it wouldn't have worked if she called on that phone number today. Yeah. So the first thing tomorrow morning is, is that we don't want you calling into the office because we get all kinds of phone calls in the office that we don't answer the phone. We don't answer the phone when we're broadcasting. We have three lines here, three phone lines. The only, fine lo the only phone line that is uh, advertised is, is the 331-1493. So the phone rings all the time. We don't answer it when we're broadcasting. The way it works is that if the first line is busy, the call bounces to the second line. If the second line is busy, the call bounces to the third line. So the phone number that Susan's going to, that the, the phone number that you had in Port Jefferson, and the phone number that she's going to email you tomorrow, is the phone number for the second line that nobody calls. So when we, when that phone when that line rings, we'll know that it's someone calling into the meeting. So please, brethren, cooperate with us, okay? Because we have a very hard job here. We're understaffed, and our conditions are anything but ideal, and you all have to grow up and help with the problem, and help with the solution, and not make the problem any worse. We really, really, really need your cooperation from everybody to make things as easy for us as possible here. Okay, so I'm talking to you about the... Um, and that was, th th this is what's raging in my mind. And I thought that I had prepared the, the next section for you today. If I knew that I hadn't, I wouldn't have spent hours on the internet looking for an air conditioner yesterday. So I confess to you that I, I messed up and I'm going to share with you what's going on here. And, and hopefully, and I expect that the Lord will give us some kind of a spir spiritual message to feed you spiritually. But I know that you all like to know what's going on here also. So, so, uh, so this air conditioner guy, his name is Kevin, he should, he should have said to me, well, it's 18,000 BTU, how could it not be working? We'll come and check it out. That's what it, he should have said, see? But he didn't. He just went ahead and said, oh, we're going to do this and that, and that's going to cost you $4,300. $4, so I'm not too happy with him, see? And he's away on vacation now, so I guess he'll be back on Monday. The, the second man that came in, he wanted $150 to check out the unit. But I don't see why we should pay him $150 to check out the unit when we, it's supposed to be a seven-year warranty. I, oh, I know what I was telling you. Before we moved in, I asked the landlord to make sure everything was working. And the landlord called him up and said, I want you to check out everything and make it working, make it working. And he actually met the guy here and he said, I don't know what doctor, our landlord is Dr. Hammerstein. I don't have a scene. I don't know what he wants me to do. That's brand new. I just put it in there. Well, it's not working. So he didn't check it out. So here we go. Yeah. Okay, brother, Susan is going back to the house to get me some medicine for my lungs. And I also left my blood pressure pill home. <laughs> so I, have, I have prophecy that I will be healed of everything, Lord. Uh, otherwise, the Lord really just has to help me. But I have prophecy that I will be healed of everything, so everything's going to work out. So I'm, I'm sharing with you what is prominent in my mind that has interfered with my, with my studies because this is really important. If it becomes, if the heat becomes intolerable here, it's going to affect the meetings. And everything takes time. So that's what happened yesterday. After I got home from the administrative, professional administrator's dinner, I could have been studying, but I, what was on my mind was taking care of this air conditioning so that we, we didn't have to start canceling meetings. Because this is spiritual food and it's very important to you all. So now I'm disappointed in Kevin, the air conditioning guy, and now I have to make a judgment, is he just ignorant or is he a cheat? And we just came out of this relationship with the people that sold us the, the network. And I'll tell you what happened with them. I hate to label people cheats and crooks. You, you, you want to think the best of people 
that maybe he just made a mistake, you know. So there's an 18,000 BTU unit here, when a 15 or a 12,000 or 15,000 unit should be more than enough, okay? And it's hardly working at all, so we don't even know if the others are working now. And the unit in the unit in the middle room where June sits, it has never. I, I I get frustrated with myself because I didn't think that it was warming the room enough when June was working there. But it never occurred to me to say, well, maybe it's not working properly. I want the service man. This is supposed to be a seven-year warranty. I want you to come and check this out. So I have so much on my mind that I don't do the best job with everything. That's what happens. So we have to go through things twice now. I hope he's going to come out. If he's not going to come out to test it, I'm going to complain to the landlord. I want him to test all three of them back here. we got three units back here. Who knows whether they're all working or not. So that is the that is the latest problem, which is a major problem. So I, I haven't worked on a book in six weeks since we moved in here, okay? And we're still trying to get settled here. In the meantime, my lungs don't work the way they're supposed to work and my blood pressure is under control now my lungs are rebelling but um but satan's a lawyer and i'm gonna get i'm gonna do whatever i have to do with my lungs if i have to go on the steroids i'll have to go on the steroids i really do not want to do that so i purchased this new product that's supposed to be lung support it's all different herbs we'll see what that does I'm okay. I'm okay, but when I preach, I have to. I have to. I need, need more power in my lungs. But this is not good because usually when I'm talking to you, I'm okay. It's when I start when I start preaching from notes that I need more power. But now I'm just chatting with you, and I'm having trouble I'm feeling the pressure in my chest. So that's not good. <laughs> but we just take it a day at a time, brethren. The Lord is in control. He's in control of everything. So, so I spent a lot of time looking at air conditions yesterday and, and now everything changes, you see, it keeps changing. As of last night, I thought, well, surely um, there's no way we're spending $4,300, uh, that's insane. Uh, so we'll just have to put a window air conditioner in, but it's a very small window. And uh, I thought the window was smaller than it was. And, uh, and you don't just go buy an air conditioner. So, I, But I learned a lot yesterday. This is, I've told you this many times, that ex, other than in very rare occasions, there are no experts here. I have to learn everything for myself. I have to do the research. I have to learn everything for myself. So I went online and I learned, you know, that an 18,000 BTU, that should be more than enough. What, do, what is going on here? That we were dying in the heat the other day and cold and freezing in the winter time. So, as of last night, I thought that we would have to, I thought the window was smaller than it was and that we might not even be able to get an air conditioner to fit. So I was looking at, at the portable air conditioners. And I walked in here this morning pretty much thinking that we would have to get a portable air conditioner. This is why I, I, I don't move. I really have to give myself a lot, uh, several days before I make a decision because it changes every day. And then I walk in here, I see the window's bigger than I thought it was, number one. I thought it was a very small window for some reason, but it's much bigger than I thought that it was. And now that I've been educated on the BTUs, I now understand that that unit should be working. We shouldn't have to buy anything here. So. We have to wait for Kevin to get back from vacation, and we have to wait and see what his response is for uh, my request that he come and test the unit. If he won't come and test the unit, I have to go through the landlord. I don't know how long that's going to take. And in the meantime, it's May already, so we're just going to do the best that we can do on every level. But it's, a, what, what, it's another problem that has risen up here that interferes with the spiritual work that we're trying to do. Then in the meantime, we're in a war. We were in a war with this infinite media, the people that sold that, that designed our network for us, and somehow thought that we were the goose that laid the golden egg, and they were going to be collecting $240 a month from us for doing absolutely nothing, for not even being able to do what they 
what the contract said they would do. They haven't helped us at all. Every problem that we've had on the network, with the help of the Lord, I have solved. With the, with the wisdom that the Lord has given me, I have solved it. The tech guy couldn't even solve it for us. So there's some kind of hostility going on there. I think it's coming from the owner of the company who I told you about him. His name is Joe. And he, I think he has a problem with, with me, I think, because of the Lord. I think either his wife or his, his ex-wife or his mother. I think he must have been raised in the church and he's because he just told us out of a clear blue sky when he came to meet with us, excuse me, to evaluate the situation and, and make a suggestion as to what product we needed. We're all sitting around the table talking and he just tells us that and when he was twenty by the time he was twenty years old he was married with a child and he was very bitter about it. And he was pretty much saying, And I made it anyway, this is my company. That's what he was saying. So the conclusion you draw is that he got his girlfriend pregnant and, and he had to marry her and, and it, it messed up his plans for his life, whatever they were. So I think he's very bitter against God. I don't know what else the problem could be. But they have really mistreated us and aside from mistreating us, they have not performed as, as a contractor. They have not performed adequately and I've been very limited as to what I could do because we needed them and, and as I explained to you, I had a lot of trouble finding someone who could help. We needed a consultation. We needed advice as to how to set up this network. And we're, we're in the middle, okay? Our needs are more towards being a large corporation than they are towards being a, a small. If you look at us, we're a small business. There are, there are three, one, two, there, there are three people in the office except me every day. And then Susan comes in, uh, I'm sorry, uh, June comes in one day a week, and Rose works remotely. So there's really four, and Rose isn't, isn't full-time. I would like to put her on full-time if the Lord would provide the funds. I would like very much to put, Rose edit, is our editor. So that's on the table. So there are four, so, if you, so there are like four employees besides me. We're small, you know, we're a small office, but the, the, the scope of the work that we do is way beyond the number of employees that we have here. Actually, when this inter, inter, when this inter, intermedia, infinite media came in and we had that meeting, his comment when he saw what we had here so that he could make his recommendations, he said, oh, he said, you jumped right over being a small business. In, in other words, he said, the, the device that you need, because I had done some research on my own and I had said, this is what I think we need. You know? And he said, no, he said, what you are looking at is basically a home user product. You are enterprise, in other words, enterprise meaning, uh, enterprise describes a business level that is beyond home office. There's home, there's home office, small office, and enterprise. Our home office and small office might be the same, I'm not sure. He said, you, you jumped over a small, small business office. Your, your, your technological needs, your technical needs, the, the equipment that we have to design to meet your needs is beyond small business, your enterprise. You're, you're, you're in the major business category. This is what our technical needs are because we have all of these video files that need to be dealt with. Video files, MP3 files. We prepare to, to burn uh, DVDs. Every video that we make, Every meeting is, is, is videotaped, and every video that we make, that means twice a week I preach, we are prepared to, to uh, burn it, this message to a DVD and when the day comes that people start wanting these messages. So we have the technology set up in our files to burn it to a DVD if anyone would ever want to buy it, at which point we would have to start find a system to start mass producing, but that hasn't happened yet. But the foundation is there. So we save every, every a videotape of every message. We have labels for DVDs, the, the foundation for burning the DVD if we need it, for every message. And uh, as far, that's, that's the, from the technology part of it. So we have all these video files, and then we also convert them into MP3s, which is the audio only, in case somebody just wants to download a file and just listen to it. So we have 
we have the, the foundation for a DVD, which is video and audio. And audio only, all of this is worked on and recorded. It's, it's a lot of work. And then we're working on the books. And it's almost a joke, but we're, we're transcribing, we're having the messages transcribed by a professional transcribing service right now. And Susan tells me we're in the 300s. We were in the 300s of Lem. We haven't even started with CCK except for one here or there. It's like when you stop to think about it, the, 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 the job is monumental of getting all these messages transcribed in preparation, preparation for some kind of publication. Even if they're not going to be made into formal books, we might, we might, people might want to buy the transcripts. Some people prefer to read. It's a big deal. We have to tr translate the, the audio file the audio video file, we have to, we have to, we have to rip the audio out of the audio video file and then we have to convert it from a cassette tape to a digital file that can be go on the computer from, a, from, from an audio cassette to a file that can be read on the computer which is called a digital file. And that happens in real time. That means the three hour message has to play for three hours and while it's playing, it's being converted into a digital file. Well, then that could be a full-time job if the Lord ever opens it up to that degree. That could be a full-time job of converting the cassette tape, which is an analog tape, to a digital tape that you can read on the computer. It's, it, you have to watch the machine. It's not automatic. And one side of the tape is, is an hour or 45 minutes. If you're not there when, 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 the t when that side of the tape comes to an end, the file in the, in the computer keeps running. So you have a digital file if you don't attach it with 15, 20 minutes, an hour on it, with nothing on it because the, the analog tape stopped and the digital tape is still running. It needs to be monitored. So if the Lord ever come, brings us to that point, that as far as I'm concerned, that's a full-time job for somebody. Help, working to convert these tapes from analog to digital. And then once you get them converted to digital, we have, we, we have to, well, they have to be cleaned up. I'm not even sure how to explain that to you because I haven't worked on it in a long time. But it has to be processed, it has to be saved has to be saved with the name, it has to be filed in the right place on the computer. Then you have to write the email to the service you know, that, that's doing the conversion. You have to give them the instructions, you have to arrange for their payment. It's going into, the, into their website and arranging for the digital file to be transcribed. Then the transcript comes back and that has to be checked over. And one of the major things that we check it for is that in the past, I thought Jesus was God. So, and that's a major correction that the Lord made here. He is the Son of God. He is not Jehovah. Jesus is not Jehovah. He is the Son of God. And as I've been telling you lately, he, that's the fire department next door, brethren. <laughs> so we do not have a soundproof recording studio, but that's okay. So he, this is a big, um, and you can't, I, you can't even call it an error. This knowledge that Jesus is the Son of God and he's not God, he's not Jehovah God, is a product of our maturity because the whole church teaches that he's God. So that's where we started from. Okay. So we have to have someone searching the transcript for known errors that we didn't know about back in years ago, 15, 20 years ago when I was preaching in the 300s, it was like at least 20 years ago. Okay. And then sometimes uh, it depends on the message, not so much with the LEM messages, but we have done a few CCK messages. And the professional transcribers, they, um, they have trouble, more trouble with the CCK messages, so they leave blank spaces on the transcript, un unintelligible, unintelligible. They couldn't understand what I was saying. so. Um, sometimes, if a, if a, sometimes, if we have the, the 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 people who could do it, I would have them listen to the. If it's, it depends on how important the message is. 
in my estimation, because we're limited. If I had all the employees that I wanted, I would have somebody all day long, their job would be listening to the tape and looking at the transcript and filling in all the places that they couldn't understand what I was saying. So there's just a, a lot of work. A lot of work once you get the transcript and the transcript has to be filed and cataloged and it's a tremendous amount of work that is being accomplished here with the small staff that we have. So we are enterprise. We just don't have the staff that would, we don't have the staff or uh, we don't have the staff that you would expect from an, a, a corporation that has ascended to the level of enterprise. And up until now, up until six weeks ago, we were still working out of my house, which was ridiculous for an enterprise corporation to be still in the condition that we were in. So now at least we have corporate headquarters here that we're calling the Selden Center. But there's really, I, I would say, uh, at least we could use two more full-time employees um, if the Lord wanted to go that way, to, to work on, these, on, the, on, the, on the translation of the, of the, um, of the tapes to, to, from analog to digital and, and to help Susan with the, the transcripts. It would be, one person would be in charge of the transcripts. One person would be in charge of converting from analog to digital. The other person would be in charge of getting those digital tapes communicating with the transcribing service. And um, it's, it's just a, it's really a very, very big job. They, they, and we're only up to number 300 of LIM. What about all the CCK messages? So that's a full-time job, possibly even for more than one person, if the Lord wanted to go that way. I don't, I, I just operate at the level that I'm operating at. He has to expand them and he has to show me that he wants to go in that direction. And it's very interesting that I'm even having this conversation with you right now because we've had a tremendous blessing in this ministry and that is young Jace, who happens to be Susan's son, has been working here after he graduated college. And, um, and I forgot about Brooke. I forgot to tell you about Brooke. We have four, four employees plus Brooke who works uh, 9 or 11 hours a week processing the videotapes. She works at night after her regular job. So God has just gave us a great miracle because this young man was available and he has helped us to move and he has done so many handyman events, you know, with putting up pictures, putting, screwing things together, moving, carrying heavy things. I don't know how we would have done it if the Lord didn't have someone here to help us in this way. And the Lord had him here to our great, great advantage. So he graduated college in June, and I, we originally put him on part-time. He's like a, a gopher, you know, we, whatever needs to be done, he, he, he does it. Any little odd job, he's, He's very bright, so sometimes he'll do, do things on the computer if something needs to be done. Or he'll go to the bank, or he'll run an errand, or he'll fix something. He's a, he's a handyman. He just does whatever needs to be done. He was working three days a week. You know? But when we moved, there was all of this work, to all of this man work to do. And he's just done it in the most incredible, with the most incredible efficiency. <laughs> and what's really amazing, is that he tells us that he never did anything like this before. And his own mother says, this was always my son who was, he was always in his head. You know, he just graduated college. He's, a, he's an intellect, he's a brain. She never saw him do anything with his hands, painting, fixing, hanging the, the rack that we're gonna put the coats on on the wall. Uh, she said she didn't know that he, that she'd never seen him working with his hands like this. And his testimony is, he didn't even know that he could do it. And if you would see his work, his work is at such a level of expertise that I said to him, you know, Chase, you should put out business cards. You've got a business here. Of course, he doesn't want to be a handyman. He wants to be a lawyer. But I said, you, you, your, your work is so professional, you could actually advertise and work as a handyman. And he said he didn't even know he could do it. So the Lord dropped that wisdom on him. Okay.
So what I'm, the main point of what I'm trying to tell you now is that a lot of this handyman type work is done. I just prayed this morning. I, I, obviously, at some point, he's going to be leaving us because he has to go forward with his career. But right now, he doesn't have any. He, I think he's looking for another job. But uh, right now, he's considering going to a school, and he doesn't. And we're the only job that he has. So, with all of this handyman work not available, there may not be enough work for him to work five days a week. So I was just praying this morning, saying, Lord, I would, if there's work for him to do, and if it's okay with you, and if you're going to provide the funds, I would really like to keep him on because he's. He's versatile. He just does whatever needs to be done. He also he's our vid video editor. He creates the short clips and uploads them. He, he creates them. He edits them. I, I just remember I have two that I have to name. He edits them. He, so he works on the computer as a video editor, very skilled. And then he uploads them to YouTube. And so he goes from doing that to, to vacuuming the floor. He just does anything that you need him to do. And there's just so much to do around here. So I said, Lord, I would really like to keep him five days a week as long as I can. It was okay with you, but I don't know what he would do now that there's no more carpentry-type work to do, or man-type work to do. I, I don't know what, what he would do if it's okay with you to keep him on five days a week. And here I am telling you what he could do. We could have him working on, on translating the tapes from, from analog to digital, okay? You can have him working on the transcripts, you know. He can take any of those jobs that I just described to you. So this comes, you see, the Lord, the Lord is amazing. Here I am, I come in here, and my mind was blanked out. I didn't have to be looking for air conditioners last night. I could have been preparing a message for you, but I was looking for air conditioners last night, thinking I had today's message prepared, but I didn't. So here I am talking to you, believing God's going to give us a message. And I know you all like to hear this kind of message also anyway. It makes you feel like you're closer to us. And here's the Lord answering my question. Now all that I have to make sure is that we can afford to pay him. But it seems to me that the Lord's answering my question. Sheila, there is work for him to do. There's plenty of work for him to do five days a week for as long as he wants to stay. And as long as the Lord provides the money, which he's been providing for six weeks. So, he has, so here I think I'm just chatting with you, and the Lord's answering my question. There is work for him to do. There's plenty of work for him to do, you know, to stay on five days a week, assuming everything else uh, proves out, and, and the Lord wants us to spend the money that way. So the, the Lord doesn't, doesn't waste any time. No, nothing, nothing is wasted. Absolutely nothing is wasted. And he's, he's working with us to get all of this work done on such a, 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 a minimal staff. Just a minimal staff. So, so that's what happened yesterday and this morning. I thought that I had a, a spiritual message for you. And I didn't say, so here I am talking to you and telling you what, updating you and telling you what's going on. And now I have a witness that if every other aspect of it proves out that Jay, there would be work for Jay's to continue to work five days a week, it's so long as he's here, because the young man's looking to promote his career. So if the Lord, so long as the, until the Lord opens a door for him elsewhere, yes, there is plenty of work for him to do. When we moved in, he, uh, he set up all the computers, he, he installs programs, he goes from highly technical work to sweeping the floor and taking out the garbage. <laughs> it's called a gopher. Yeah, go for. He goes for this and he goes for that. And he just does anything. He goes here and he goes there. He went. He took our forms to the accountant the other day because it's tax season. The uh, individual tax season is up. The, the deadline is April fifteenth, but for corporations, the deadline is May fifteenth. So we're still negotiating with the accountant on our corporate taxes. Oh, I, my body is under such attack. I am so sorry to be groaning in front of you. <gasps> my knee. <laughs> Having trouble with my knee. Okay, the Lord's going to be glorified in all this.
Did you hear that? <laughs> okay. He's still working on me <laughs> to be what he wants me to be. Okay. So now I want to update you on, on uh, infinite, an infinite media. Unless anybody has any, Susan's not here, she drove to my house, but if you have any question, you can use the telephone. You can use the telephone when I in invite you to. But to interrupt me while I'm speaking, you break the whole train of the spirit. And I'm sorry that I got frustrated with Rita, but I have been telling you all this for, year, for 30 years I'm telling you this. Do not break the spirit. So. I apologize for getting frustrated, but you all have to grow up. You just really have to stop doing things. That, you need to start doing what's required of an adult member of this ministry. That's what it comes to. So I don't know why I brought it up again. I don't know, but I did. So I want to uh, update you on Infinite Meeting that we were in, in this war with this, this man who's so absolutely hostile to us, and the us is me, I'm, I'm the target, absolutely hostile towards me, spoke, spoke in such a hostile manner on a conference call that his own wife pulled the plug on him. She said, she said to him, no, and all of a sudden he's off the air. She says his, the call fell, the call didn't fall, she pulled the plug on his phone. But uh, so there's some problem there. Well, anyway, the latest incident the latest incident, which started a couple of days ago, was that the, 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 the main thrust of, of, the, of the equipment that we needed was what do we do? What do we do with all of these video files? How do we preserve them? You know? And how do we back up our files, the book files? And, Everything that we do backup has been like a major problem for me for years. So the network that we have, and I, I, I explain this to you, but I'll just tell you again, I guess if that's what I'm supposed to be saying. The unit or the device is called a NAS, an NAS, a Network Attached Storage. It's a device that is designed to, to store, it's storage, okay, that is designed to, to store data, and in particular, video files. It's made for video files, for large files. So it's network attached storage. That means it's a, device, it's a storage device that is attached to your network. And where is your network? Your network is on your computer. So we have, we have six PCs in the ministry right now. We have, Susan has one, Jace has one, that's Jason and June share. Then Cheryl, who's not a member of the ministry, but I don't know how she tolerates working on these books, but she does. And then Cheryl has a computer, and I have a computer, so that's four PCs here in Selden. And in Port Jeff, I have a computer, and Brooke works at home because she has a job that she works at during the day. She works for the ministry at night. So we have two locations to our corporation. I hate to call it a business, it's just a ministry. But, but when you say ministry, I didn't mean to say just a ministry, but when you say ministry, some people don't understand that we're running a business here. Every, every church doesn't do what we do. We have a business going here. And very few churches have anything like this at all, unless maybe they're major me me mega churches selling a lot of books, well, then they would be similar to us, but we're different because we, we publish our own books. We, have, we are a book publishing company, but at the very least, we are a, a fully functioning, uh, full-time business operating here. We, and what do we, what do we do from that business point of view? We are book publishers. And we, we, are, we are book publishers, and we are prepared to, we're, we're a media company. Right now we're publishing books, but we're preparing to produce DVDs and digital files. And we, are, we are a media company, and we are a business, a fully functioning business. 
We have books on Kindle. We have received royalties from Kindle. People have bought hardcover books. Okay, not that, that many right now, but we're, we have all of the governmental mechanisms set up. We are a fully functioning business. We're not a church that has a church office. We're a fully functioning business. So I was explaining to you what this network attached storage is. So we have a network. We have two locations, okay, and we have six. We have six PCs at two locations, and they all communicate with each other. Actually, we have two networks. We have one network here in Selden, and we have a network attached storage, a device called a NAS network attached storage, and we have four PCs attached to that NAS here in Selden, and we call that NAS two. And then we have a network in Port Jeff. We have another, a second device, and that is NAS1. We have a network attached storage and two PCs. We also have a couple of laptops. We have two, we, we broadcast over a laptop. We have two PCs in Port Jeff. So we have six PCs all together, and one to at least two, if not th three. We have, June's working on a laptop. We have three laptops. On, on two networks with two device, two NAS devices, two network uh, attached storages. So why do we need two of them? Because we need backup copies. You can't just have one copy of all these video files. You're supposed to, ideally you're supposed to have three if you want to listen to the experts or the people that have experience beyond our experience. They tell you you should have three copies of everything on separate, in separate locations in case, God forbid, there's a disaster in one location, God forbid a fire, anything that that would cause the the, the NAS to or the, that would cause the NAS or the computer that you're working on to be destroyed and all of your digital files destroyed with it. So if it's a, if there's if you have two NASs on the same location and God forbid there's a fire, they're both destroyed. You have nothing. So you have to have them in two separate locations. Now, until the, until the Lord gave us the Selden Center, we had a real problem because we didn't have two locations. I, I know Brett has a couple of hard drives in his safe, but it just it it was it was not set up properly, brother. Now we're set up properly. We have two network attached storage devices at two separate locations with the same files on both device on both devices. So do we have a third copy? We don't have a third copy right now, but we do have what's called RAID on both of those devices. So if there's, now that wouldn't help us if God forbid there's a fire, but if there's somebody makes a mistake, and or if the, if the hard drive fails, what RAID is, it's called reciprocal hard drive. They, they're within each device. There are multiple hard drives that are mirror images of each other. So we have two NASs, two network attached storages that are complete mirrors of each other. They have the same files on them. And each device has within it a series of hard drives, paired hard drives that mirror each other. So we have two devices with 10 files, let's say 10 files on each that are the same. And then each device has within it two hard drives that are complete reflections of each other. So we really have four copies of the data on two devices and the chances of one of both devices being destroyed is like 0.2%, 0.02%. So for now, anyway, we're working with these two devices with duplicate copies on each device and trusting God for it at this, at this time, you know, that that's what we have. Mm -hmm. So the, the two NASs have to communicate with each other. If they both have the same files, mm -hmm. what happens when Susan works here in Selden on the NAS 2 and Brooke works, or I work in Port Jeff on the NAS 1, how do, how do they get the same, how do, how do they get copied to the opposite device? 
the way they get copied to the opposite device is the software on the two NAS devices. There's this, this software on there, and it's called syncing software. Syncing mean, meaning that it's a program that says whatever change I make in Port Jeff, the software will copy it to the I'm smiling, brethren, because we have <laughs> we have the, the building next door. There's a big for sale for rent sign up there, and it's been there ever since we moved in. About two weeks ago, some young men started to be appearing in that building, but the police sign is still there. But these we don't know who they are. But they they finish up about it's now 12:25 in New York. They finish up around 12 o'clock. We don't know what they're doing. And they go out. Our, our parking lot is in the back, and they have a parking lot. It's just over the fence. You can see their parking lot. And they all come out, and when they come out, they chant. And it sounds to me like a military chant. It sounds to me like if, you've ever, if I've ever seen, I've seen a picture, I've never been in the military, of like young recruits, and they're, like I say, like this, the sergeant says something, and they say, yes, sir, and they all say it in unison. Okay, that's what it sounds like to me. A bunch of young men, all male voices, and there's something that they're sounding, they're saying with a military tone to it. So we're all dying of curiosity to find out who they are and what they're doing next, next door. We don't know whether the landlord said, you could meet here until I rent the place, or whether the place is rented. And for some reason, they haven't taken the sign down yet. I don't know. But I was uh, talking to Susan yesterday, saying the next time they're out there, I'm going to be... Actually, what happened was, the first time we heard it, we heard this chanting, what's going on. So, I have a back door from my office. There's a back door that opens to the parking lot out there. So I opened the door to see what that was. It almost it could have been a parade. It could have been anything like that. And some of the young men that were getting in their cars must have heard the door open, and they looked up at me and smiled. So I was kidding at the dinner yesterday saying, well, the next time I hear them chanting, I'm going to go out there and yell at them and saying, what are you saying? I want to, we want to know who you are. What are you saying? So when I heard them chanting just now, I started to smile because we have to find out who they are. It's a very positive chant. So anyway, I interrupted. I was explaining to you about network attached storage. Okay. So there's a program that community, there's a communication it's called a virtual private network. We have a private network network that the two net, the two devices communicate with each other. And when I make a change on a, a file on my NAS one, what Brooke does, and it's cop my NAS one, then click 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 copies it to NAS two. If Susan makes a, a change or if June makes a change on NAS two. The software on NAS2 goes click, 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 and copies it to NAS1. So we have complete reciprocal copies. And this software is called syncing software, meaning it synchronizes the two devices that they should have the same, the same data on it. Now, I ran into a problem programming it because of a... a you have to understand how the software works. So I had the, the wrong thinking, and I set it up incorrectly, and I ran into a problem that I couldn't fix. I couldn't fix because, thank you very much, Susan. I couldn't fix the problem because I didn't understand. Excuse me while I take my, my pill. This is, yeah. No, it's getting warmer, but I'm okay so far. But you can put on the air conditioner if you want to see to, uh, to whatever degree it's going to work. It's better than nothing. <laughs> Excuse me, brother. Blood pressure taken care of for now. If I still have trouble breathing, I have something for that. <laughs> you have to laugh, right? But it's only, only for now, okay? It's not going to always be this way. So, so I ran into a problem with the syncing software because 
you have to understand how the software works to use it properly. I couldn't fix it. So we're paying $240 a month to Infinite Media. And the young man who was our, supposed to be our first contact, not only could he not fix it, he could not even comprehend the problem. I explained it to him two or three times. He didn't have a clue as to what I was talking about. So he went to, to Teresa, I guess, and told her. And she called us up and said, well, this problem is beyond the scope of the contract. We, we never, the contract that we signed does not include tech support on this level. So if you want us to help you with this problem, the cost is $95 an hour. So I said, well, you know, they're really right. You know, this, this, this problem is not in included in the scope of the contract. So $95 an hour, they should be able to, if they know what they're doing, they should be able to fix it within an hour. So uh, just to make the story short, I described the problem. I gave them screenshots. Blah, blah, blah. And the next day, we hear from, from them, and the, the message that Teresa is the go between. She doesn't even understand the, 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 the details of it. She just writes what they tell her. And she's writing to me with some ridiculous solution to the problem. They're telling me the solution to the. Now, Brothers, so that you can follow me, the problem is with the NAS1 and the NAS2. You now know what that is, right? You know what I'm talking about, the NAS1 and the NAS2? The problem is with the software, the, the program on the NAS1 and the NAS2. I did something wrong on the NAS1 and the NAS2. What does the NAS1 and the NAS2 do? It's a program that reaches out and lays hold of files and makes sure that the files on the NAS1 match the files on NAS2. But it's the program on the NAS1 and the NAS2 that's grabbing the files. It has nothing to do with the files. If I, if, if I want to grab this phone, okay, and, and, the, and, the program, and the program isn't reaching the phone, the problem is with the, the, the program that it's not reaching. I can't grab the phone because my arm's not long enough to reach the phone. You need to fix the program that tells my arm to reach further. Reach further and grab the phone. The problem is not with the phone. The problem is that my arm is not reaching out far enough. Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay. So they tell me the solution. That the, I'm saying the problem is with my arm. Okay, it's not reaching far enough. The NAS is not working. They say to me, well, okay, we're going to fix your phone. And we're gonna we're gonna change the case on your phone, and now everything will be fixed. I said, now that's a parable that I'm giving you. They said we're gonna change the case on your phone, and that's gonna fix the problem. What they said to me in reality, if you want to understand it on that level, and remember, the problem is a syncing problem program that copies files and folders from one NAS to another NAS. Copies this phone moves a copy of it over here. They sent me they sent me an email with an image saying, "This is the new file structure. This is the new phone we're giving you." See? My mom can't reach the phone, so they want to give me a new phone. They say this is this is a picture of the new file structure that we're going to create for you, and it's going to take us three hours at $95 an hour to do it. I, I, the picture of the file structure was the file structure that presently exists that I created. It's the same file structure. I said, what are you talking about? And why would you even create a new file structure? And based on my knowledge of the software, how would you create a new file structure? You would have to destroy the existing file structure. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why would you give me a whole new phone? Just please fix my arm so that it can reach my phone. 
Why, why would you do that at, for three hundred dollars? And I, at first, I didn't understand what they were saying. They said we want to give you a whole new file structure, and we're going to set up the sinks so that the file structure on the NAS one matches the file structure on the NAS two. This all exists. It all exists, and it's, it's fun. The the arm, my arm isn't working. Everything, the files are all there. Why do you want to start create a new file structure and program them to match the, each other? Why would you even do that? Why don't you just fix my arm? So, but when I first, I didn't understand what they were saying at first. So my, my response was, well, we don't need you to to create a new file structure and to and to and to create the program that will let one match the other. Just fix my arm. <laughs> They, I mean, we want the NAS one, the software on the NAS one and the NAS two to work, and we'll do all of the file creations ourselves. So they say, well, you can't do that because we won't split the job. If we, if you want us to fix the NAS one and the NAS two, you also want the job of recreating the file structure and syncing the files. Now, at that point, I thought maybe that really needed to be done. I said, no. Why should we pay you three hundred dollars when we're fully capable of dealing with the files ourselves? We're de capable of dealing with this phone. Fix my arm. <laughs> Just fix my arm. And they said unequivocally, no. It was the end of the conversation. Nothing more to say. We will not do. We have a job. So I said no. That's really wrong. And then I started thinking about it and praying about it. And I realized that there shouldn't even be a, a new file structure or a new sync programming. I, this is the way I learn, brethren. I keep telling you, I don't have formal education. And I learn in practical situations. When I'm up against a situation that doesn't make any sense, then the Lord gives me, I, I pray, and the Lord gives me wisdom, and I get the solution, and then I say, what are you talking about? What you're saying? Say, I stopped at the point of that three hundred dollars. This is just really wrong. What you're doing is just really immoral. But I still thought that that might be the solution to the problem. Then I go before the Lord. Then He shows me, no, that's not even the solution to the problem. Okay. Like I came in here this morning and I realized, no, we don't need a new air conditioner. Something's wrong with that unit. They have to fix that unit. By the way, I'm feeling the air conditioning right now, Susan. It is coming up here. Good. I'm feeling something okay. coming from it. Anyway. Okay. Does it feel cold? It's just cool, but not it's cold. It's just cool air. Yeah, it's not cold. Okay. But it's doing something at least. Thank mm. God. So um, it, it was like they really hard-nosed me. <coughs> they, they dug in. No, we're not going to fix it for you. You pay us $300. It was, I felt like I was... I felt like it was the mafia strong-arming me. That's what I felt like. No sense of client, um, contractor, working together, salesmanship. I felt like I was, uh, I was a storekeeper and, and the mafia was trying to get protection money out of me. That is what I felt like. But I just <coughs> left it. I knew that it was immoral and I, I just left it with the Lord to, to, you know, to help us. So. At this point, a corresponding problem was that, for those of you that really don't know much about this kind of technology, when you buy a, an electronic device, you know, whether it's a NAS or a, a, a router or a switch, or any of this electronic equipment, all of this electronic equipment, the co companies that make them provide tech support. Now they may provide, you may have to pay for some of it, but it's not, usually it's not unreasonable. They usually give you some minimum tech support, at least for the first few days. And then if you need help, usually for what I don't, I don't consider it unreasonable, but with the first one that we had years ago, it was a, a unlimited tech support for a year, and then they wanted $200 for it. I, I didn't think that was unreasonable. Uh, so I was looking for something like that. I was willing to get the tech support on this NAS because I didn't know everything about it that I needed to know. Then you can call them up whenever you want. And they help.
help you. So um, I, I, have, I, as of that point, I had not been able to access tech support for this, for these devices, these NASs. See, he had strong, he had strong armed us at the beginning. I think I told you I had, he had my back up against the wall. I couldn't find anyone that could help us, whose advice, whose counsel, they consult with you, was lining up with what the Lord had put in my heart, that we needed this kind of NAS technology. I couldn't find anyone else that agreed with it. They were all, every other company that we called was trying to sell us something else. He was the only one. So his terms were not reasonable. He said, I won't tell you the brand before I deliver it to you. I won't tell you what brand. He said, I, I guarantee you I'm going to do a research. I'm going to research. I'm going to find out the brand. I'm going to find out the... I'm going to find out the brand that's best for your needs. And I assure you it will be a known brand. So then when I heard that, I said, a known brand. I'm thinking, there should be tech support available, and okay, that's, I don't agree with you, but I don't have anyone else to go to, so that's not unreasonable, as long as you promise it's going to be a known brand. It's in the contract, it's going to be a known brand. Well, the known brand that he gave us, I had never heard of. When he installed the equipment, I had never heard of it, but that doesn't mean anything because he's telling us you need enterprise equipment. You don't need the brands that advertise to consumers, to people that have offices in their home. Like everybody knows about Netgear. I had wanted Netgear, you know, or Linksys. He says, no, you want a brand that, that caters to corporations that have big, that have a need for a big devices. They don't advertise to consumers that are going to be working in their home. So you never heard of that brand. It's called QNAP. I never heard of it made in Norway. So I went on the internet looking for tech support from QNAP. And I thought it would be like Netgear. I was prepared to purchase a, a, a support contract for a couple hundred dollars for the year. And they help you until, until you learn the software that hopefully you don't need it anymore. What, what this infinite medium wanted to do was they wanted to keep us dependent didn't want to teach us anything so that we, we would be on the hook forever. But aside from that, it turned out that they didn't even know the software, but that's another area. So, so near here I am, he's strong-arming me, wanting $300 to make a repair that I didn't even understand. <laughs> the last thing that I said to him was, look, you want $300? I need you to tell me what the problem is. I need you to, I, to tell me this is the problem on your equipment, and this is what I'm going to do to fix it. And then if I agree, I'll give you the $300. That's what I said to him. And he wouldn't accept that. He wanted me to just say, just fix it without understanding anything. And I said, no. Then I was up the creek because I couldn't find any QNAP tech support. And I was like, again, between a rock and a hard place. I was all over the infinite, all over the, all over the, the internet. And the only QNAP tech support that I could find was help desk. That means you fill out a support ticket by email, and they promise to answer you within 24 hours. I filled out the, Q, the help support. They never answered me. Okay. And I never heard from them again. Then they had a phone number. I called the phone number. I held on for almost half an hour, which is ridiculous. And then finally he said, leave, leave a voicemail. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. So I pressed the uh, one, option one so that I could leave a voicemail. Your voice email box, your voicemail box is full. So, so the online help desk that was supposed to answer in 24 hours didn't answer me. The voicemail box was full, so I couldn't even leave a message for them to call me back. And they did have one more option, which is a chat. And that means you, talk, you type, you, you have a conversation by typing into a field on your computer. So I tried that one. You type it in, you type in your name, and nobody came on. Now, I've had that 
experience with other companies and someone comes on in a few minutes. So I, I don't know how long I waited, but I was so programmed that the phone company, that the phone, that the phone company, but the phone deal fell through. The, there was no, the voicemail was full. That means they're not answering anybody. No one answered me from the help desk. So when they didn't come on in a few, when the chat uh, operator didn't come on in a few minutes, I just assumed that it was in, I honestly don't know how long I waited. I said, well, there's just no technical support. So I just prayed. I said, look, what, what, what do you want me to do? You know, what do you want me to do? And uh, all of a sudden, well, that, was, that had been my previous experience. Now, um, between a rock and a hard place, with them twisting my arm for $300, and I'm saying, well, if, they, if they're asking for the $300, they have, to, they have to think that they know how to fix it. Because if I say, okay, they have, to, they have to fix it. And in my mind, I'm saying, what they're talking about makes no sense that they want to fix my phone because my arm can't reach the phone. What are they talking about? How are they? It, it, it went beyond the money. How are they going to fix it when they, they're totally misunderstanding the problem? You know? So I just let it sit. And then I did a few more things, whatever I was doing, and one of the things that I did was I tried that chat room again, and boom, someone answered me. Someone answered me on the chat. I said, oh my God, I said, are you a human? Because lots of times it's computers that answer you. I typed in, are you human? You know, it was a human tech support. So that, so I now know that tech support is available through this company, but the only one that works is the chat. Thank God. You know, and that representative helped me, and I found out what the problem was, and I fixed it. And I don't know how Infinite Media could have ever fixed it because they didn't seem to have any clue as to what the problem was. What they were telling me was ridiculous. They could have never fixed it. So I'm, I'm thinking, I was thinking. And sometimes my thoughts are wrong, but sometimes I hear from God because something had to make something had to make sense. I think without even looking into it, they thought that they maybe they did know the answer. Maybe they didn't know how to fix it. To fix it, brethren, took me less than sixty seconds to fix it. <laughs> it took me less than sixty seconds to fix it. Six o oh, seconds to fix it. So. They must have known how to fix it, but they wanted to make some money. And they had to tell me what they were going to do to say, well, it's going to take three hours and $95 an hour. They had to tell me something. So they said, we're going to recreate the file structure. And here's a picture of your new file structure. It's exactly as it existed at that moment that I had created. This is a picture of your new file structure. It's a picture of what? We're going to get you a brand new phone. And this is what your brand new phone looks like. But this is my phone. <laughs> this is my phone. <laughs> I'm going to get you a brand new phone, and this is what it's going to look like. But that's what it looks like now. <laughs> that's what they were saying to me. So they were trying to figure out how to get some money out of us when it was going to take 60 seconds or less to fix it. And nothing had to be changed, and nothing had to be created, and nothing had to be redone. So I think they were probably going to tell me, if I had agreed to that, they were going to tell me that they deleted the existing file structure and recreated it. That's probably what they were going to tell me, and charge us $95 an hour for three hours. So it wasn't, at this point, at this point, what they're doing is criminal. In my opinion, they went over the line, and it became criminal. But now I found tech support, so I don't need them anymore. I'm not between a rock and a hard place anymore. No. And you may recall that we did take the support contract for two months because they had so intimidated me because I don't have a degree, brethren. Everything that I know I, I, the Lord has told me, I mean, even Lappy had, had said at one point, who's, that, that's her field, that 
she was like really so amazed at what the Lord has taught me with no school background whatsoever. Well, I have the degree of what I know with no formal education is amazing. But of course, that's true about what I know spiritually also with no formal education. It's amazing, you know, what I know. So they had so intimidated me, telling me this is a really sophisticated equipment. You'll never be able to do it. And I had an honest conversation with them. I said, well, look, this is what I can do. This is what I've done in the past. And they said, no, you'll never be able to manage this software. So they, they intimidated me into taking the support contract for two months. Excuse me, with a 10 day, I just have to notify them and give them 10 days notice that we're not going to go forward after the two months. So that was what I had taken at $240 a month. So, and they weren't even helping us. They didn't even know the software. And I, it just even, Susan, it's just mind boggling to ask the question, what are we paying you $240 a month for? Would you mind telling me what are you doing for $240 a month that you've convinced me that I, I'm, I may not be able to do it? What are you doing? Well, we do the updates because these programs always need to be updated. Well, there's an update notice that's been up there for 10 days now, when are you going to do the update? I think I'll do it myself. Let's do the update, Sheila. The message says, do you want to update? Yes or no? I click on yes. Yes. We're now going to reboot the device. Yes or no? Yes. That's what it takes to do the update. Oh my Even Joan could have done that. Oh my God. That's what it takes to do the update. And they weren't even doing it. So the whole thing was just an insane thing, but a very good experience. I've learned a lot. So anyway, I said, well, that's the end of it. I now have tech support, very, not only tech support, it's free. Not only did I find it, but it's free. Where with NetGear, we had to pay the $200 for the year. This is free. And they remote into your computer. Technology is so great these days. What does that mean? means that they, the, the people that will help you from QNAP there in California, the guy we're speaking to was in California, he, there's a program that lets him enter into your computer, he can see everything on your screen, okay, and then he just, does, he teaches you, he just does it, and you see what he's doing, and, uh, and it's free. So I don't need them anymore. I said, well, that's it, we don't need them anymore. And uh, I'll send them their 10 days notice. And we, we pay. I said, pay them for me first. We sign the contract, pay them. We'll send the 10 days notice and we'll, they'll be out of our life. And the last communication was this hard nose. You'll pay us $300 or we won't tell you anything. You know? And so I said, well, I guess that's just the end of it. Um, we'll never hear from them again. And then I come in the next morning, which was yesterday, and there's an email from Teresa, this poor woman. She's married to this guy. He's really got problems. <laughs> it's him. I say, it's, it's her husband. If he's her husband, whatever he is. Whatever the relationship is. I, she takes one name. When, when she takes one name as administrator in the office, and then when, when we signed the service contracts, she had a different name. So I don't, she's probably married. I don't care whether they're married or not. Uh, so I get an email from her, a reconciliatory email, saying she, she, she ignored the email that said, you'll take the whole thing, you, you will pay us the $300, we will recreate your files, we will not let you do it yourself even though you know how to do it. Either you take the whole deal or nothing. We fix it, we recreate the files, we create the sinks, okay, or nothing. No business that will fix it and then you can create your own sinks. No way, the whole, all or nothing, okay. Instead of $95, we're going to charge you 95 times 3, and it's all or nothing. So the next morning we come in, and I get an email from her, completely ignoring that email and going back to a previous email where I had said, look, we don't want you to, to recreate the files. We don't want you to recreate the sinks. We can do that ourselves. All that we want you is to fix the software on NAS1 and NAS2 fix my arm. My arm's not reaching the phone. Just fix my arm. That's all we want you to do. 
So she went back to that email and said, well, I was out of the office yesterday, but I'm back in the office, and uh, I'll get an answer for you as soon as I speak to my crew. Now, this is an important lesson, you see. Because even Susan asked me a couple of questions on this, because I, she said, why can you do it now when you couldn't do it before? Why, why could I do not, not, Why would I do what now? Why would I write to them now when I wouldn't write to them before? And I'm also saying we're going to send them some books. Why did you say don't send them books before and don't offer them books before and offer them books now? Because the spiritual atmosphere changes. When the spiritual atmosphere changes, we change. The most obvious example I can give you is repentance. And this isn't just spiritual, this is just in life. Even, even in a movie I was watching the other day, I'll give you an example of this, you know, Years ago, in medieval times, women of royal families were sold. They were literally given in marriage to, to men just to make treaties between countries. I think most of you know that. So this young girl was sent from uh, Italy to Russia, a totally foreign nation. She didn't speak the language. And uh, she's there all by herself, just trained how to act. So there she is. There's the man she's going to marry, the prince. And there's his mother very awesome mother, you know, and she said something, and it was obvious the mother didn't like what she said, and the young girl said to her, the way the young girl, everybody was, the tension was there, you know, and the young girl said to her mother-in-law, oh, you are absolutely right, that is the way to do it, and all the tension went down. The scripture says, brethren, speak a soft word to the king, and avoid his wrath, because the wrath of a king is deadly. To, to, for someone who has a legitimate authority over you to be angry with you, a godly anger or an ungodly anger, is deadly because they have that authority over you. That's what happened when Noah cursed Ham. Noah was fallen, Ham was not, but Noah was still Ham's father and curse Canaan, and curse the whole line of Ham. See, when, when uh, both Jesus and Paul were, I, I, I just heard this the other day, Paul said that he called the high priest a whited wall. And someone said, you shouldn't speak to the high priest that way. And Paul said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were the high priest. It's the Apostle Paul speaking to the Pharisee, Pharisaical priest who deserved, deserved a, a rebuke. But as soon as Paul was told, that's the high priest, he said, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were the high priest. And something similar with Jesus. I just heard it the other day, but it's eluding me right now. We must submit to authority. Authority, even if they're wrong, has the power to cause a lot of trouble for us. The way to go is to submit to the authority and seek God to speak to the authority. That is whether, and people don't like to hear it today, brethren, but it's a major part of my message. If you're a child, if you, even if you're an adult child, not only if you're an adult child do you need to, to submit to your parents. Like, that means you don't, you don't have to do it if they're telling you to do something wrong. I'm talking about the attitude that you take towards the person. I'm talking about an attitude. Even if it's an older sister or brother. You, we need to respect people for the, their position in life. You see? So now what was I saying that I, that I told you that? What was I trying to tell you that I was talking about submission to authority? I was talking about infinite media. I was talking about this... When, when I said, why give a book? Yes, why? yes. So the reason I had initially said, and it wasn't even, I felt that the Lord had told me, don't offer them any books. When the installer came in, we offered the installer for the IT system a book, and he was appreciative and took it. The guy that did the wiring, we offered a book, and he was appreciative and took it. But Joe and Teresa, the Lord said, don't offer them any books. And I, the, only, the Lord didn't tell me why, but I perceived it was that he has a hard heart towards Christ. 
And I think it's because probably his parents forced him into that marriage when he impregnated his girlfriend. That's just my guess. But the Lord told me don't give them any books. So the last that we heard was that hard-nosed email. You'll pay us $300 or we won't help you. So I said to Susan, well, that's it, you know. That's the end of the communication. We'll just send the letter, giving them 10 days notice, ending the contract, and, uh, and that's the end of it. I wouldn't write to them again. Why wouldn't I write to them again? Because they were closed. They were closed. They, they, your face is, and your mind is a door. Excuse me, they were completely closed. They were completely closed. So you shouldn't waste, you shouldn't throw your pearls before swine. When someone is that completely closed, you don't try to talk to them because you're not going to get anywhere, anywhere, anyway, and then they'll just turn it around and use it against you. Well, how can they turn it around and use it against you? Well, I'm talking about a situation where you, you are the authority, but you really don't want any trouble. You really don't want to punish you. What you really want is the person who's under you to just do the right thing so that the situation can be dealt with. You have a right heart. You want the, you want the child to say that they're sorry so that you don't have to whoop them. Okay? But when the other person will not repent, they will not back down, but they're staring you down completely, disrespecting your authority, and taking control of the situation, okay. there's no talking to them because they believe they're in, whether it's conscious or not, that they're in control of the situation and they're setting the terms. $300 or no help. What do you say to somebody like that? Please don't do that. Please be reasonable. Please be nice. You know, brethren, that was the attitude I took towards my 14-year-old daughter. I begged her. I said, Maria, please, judgment's going to fall on you. Don't, don't do this. Don't, don't be rebellious like this. Don't do this. And she laughed at me. And within a couple of months, the Lord moved her out of my home. And she hasn't recovered yet. Maybe she never will, outside of Christ. Her wounds are so deep, she can't even talk to me. She can't even bear to talk to me. To even consider that she might, her behavior might have had something to do with her being moved out of my home. It's easier to believe that I'm a witch and a monster and that she was totally innocent. Cinderella, it's much easier to believe that. See? So, um, I get this email from Teresa, a reconciliatory email saying, well, um, all you want is for us to fix the NAS 1 and the NAS 2. I'll talk to my crew about it. In a very nice spirit. So now the door to our mind is open. That's the equivalent of someone saying, well, I'm sorry I went too far, and I shouldn't have gone too far, so forget what I said. Let's back up. So now the doors of our mind are open. And it wasn't, it wasn't just her. It's the people that are telling her what to write. So what the Lord had me to do was I sat down and I wrote an email and I told them they really, they really didn't treat us properly and they didn't service us properly. And aside from it being a personal thing, they, were, they really bullied me. To, I mean, I have to live. I'm just amazed that someone that I'm doing business with that we paid thousands of dollars to would be bullying me like this. It just boggled my mind, you see, but it, that's what was happening. But I didn't put anything personal in the email. I just put down the things that they did wrong on top of bullying me. You know, they were bullying the whole ministry, but it was basically me that they were bullying. Uh, um, uh, they, they really didn't perform their services very well. They did a lot of things that were really wrong. So I laid them all out. You know. They said, you did this, and I said, it will go to the tech support. I had to fix that myself, I fixed that myself, I fixed that myself. I could have said you didn't, you were worthless to us, but I was very careful not to make it a personal attack. They, I mean, they have to understand if I fixed it that they couldn't fix it. And then I said, with the installation of the telephones, you did this. With the installation of the port chip, 
is, uh, uh, office, you did this, and you did this, and, you, and it was all just factual mm -hmm. as to where they failed. And then my final sentence was, um, I, I bless your business, I bless you, they just bought a new building. I bless your business, I bless your lives. And then I have to, I, you know, how do I talk to you? Do I say the Lord told me to do it? Did, did I hear a voice telling me to do it? No, I didn't hear a voice telling me to do it, but Christ Jesus in me, the second Adam in me, okay, the new me, who is the second Adam, rose to the surface in my mind as I was writing this email, and that was what he had me to do. I wrote, in Jesus' name. Now, I would never do that in a business email, to say, uh, blessings on your life and your business and your new building in Jesus' name. And I could, the Lord was, it, that man has an issue with Jesus Christ. See? And that was how I felt the Lord, my, my, my whole instinct, which was Christ Jesus in me, the second Adam, that was what he wanted me, my understanding is that what he, was, was, was what he wanted me to write. And I prayed about the email and I sent it that way in Jesus' name. And I said to Susan, we'll send them books on salvation and baptism. So she said, well, you said no books for them. Why did you change your mind? And also I said I wouldn't write to them again, but I changed my mind. I changed because they changed. I changed what I wanted to do because they changed. See? God is always relate, always responding to us. Well, Sheila, why are you talking about God now? You were just talking, are you, do you think you're God? No. God and his agents are always responding to people who are not in Christ, or the people who are not in Christ. If the two people are in Christ, they're in complete agreement. If Christ Jesus is present in somebody, that's the second Adam, and in an interaction or an encounter with somebody, and they're not in Christ, okay? he's always responding to them. Because Christ Jesus is the second Adam, and Adam is the creation of God, and Adam is a God, a God. Not the God, he is not Jehovah, but he is a spiritual man, and he is a God to anyone that has a lesser spiritual authority than he has. I mean, the reality is, brethren, that you are a god to your children. They, especially your infants, they would die without you. You are. That's why the scripture says it's so important that we respect people that have an authority over us. It's just. It doesn't mean that you genuflect and kiss their feet. It's just an attitude that this generation in this country is losing. You're not all equal. We're not all equal. We are not all equal. See? So, what was I saying that I said that? I would deviate and say that. So, what, what, what was I saying that I deviated from that? I was talking about sending them books. I was talking about, yeah, that their, their attitude changed, yes. So, so I, I, was, I, I deviated to say that Adam is God to us. Adam is the, the second Adam, who was in right standing with, with God, with Jehovah, okay, is God's agent to humanity. So he is a God to us in that. Why is he a God to us? Because he wields the power of God. He has the authority of God to deal with humans. So he's always responding. Christ Jesus in me is responding to me. He responds to me. If I have an episode where I cannot repent, he will deal with me in one way. When my heart softens and I come into submission, he deals with me in another way. In a, in a, in a more uh, positive way. Because when someone, when someone submits to you properly, that your inclination is to go easy on them. When someone 
who was supposed to be in submission to you was taking authority over you. Christ Jesus hardens up. The scripture says God always, always, always resisteth the proud. He resists the proud. And then the scripture says the, the wrath, uh, 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 speak a soft word to the king. Lest his wrath come down on you. The anger of someone that has a legitimate authority over you is very powerful. People that are abused by their parents, they're severely damaged. Only, only Jesus can help them. We're all, we're all the products of imperfect parents. Depending on the extent of the of the abuse and the motive of the abuser, was your was your father just ignorant? You know, what was he really cruel to you? Depending on what your experience is, it, it it forms you. It makes what you are in this world. It makes it makes you who you are in this world until Jesus comes in and tells you that you're in His image. You know that's what it means to be in Jesus's image. It means that. The second Adam that's being formed in us is in the image of, of, of God, okay? because Christ is the image of God. Yeah. When, we, when our consciousness moves into Christ, we move away from all of the wounds, all of the wounds of the first Adam that were placed there by authorities that let us down. Because Christ is the image of God and his ministry to us is perfect. And we all are the product of our relationship with authority. The good parts of us and the bad parts of us. The things we do right, the things we do wrong, the things that are self-destructive in our lives. That's all the product of our experiences with authority and people that we've loved and trusted. And all of that is left behind, all of your scars, all of your wounds, all of your still bleeding sores, you leave that behind when you migrate your consciousness into Christ Jesus. Because the ministry of that authority of Christ Jesus to you is perfect. And it is, it, it is developing in you the very best that you could have ever achieved as a human being. Because that authority that in your interactions with that authority, it's with Christ Jesus in you and Christ Jesus and your relationship with Christ Jesus in another person. It's your relationship with Christ Jesus in me and Christ Jesus in you and Christ Jesus in the brethren in the ministry because he's not divided. There's only one Christ Jesus. It's your relationship with Christ. Now, there can be someone in the church that is cruel to you. Well, that's not Christ Jesus. But it's your relationship with Christ Jesus that is making you into a new person with no wounds and no scars and only the good things of God being found in you. That's what it means to be in the image of God. See? So, so she changed. Now the doors were open. Why? Because she gave up that strong arm, trying to strong arm me, and wanted peace with me. So the door was open, and I went right in. I wrote my email. I brought judgment. Judgment, judgment is the sentence coming down, although I didn't really, I, I, I have to see how to explain that. I didn't bring a sentence down on her. I, I took that opportunity to show her her sins. I think that's called judgment. Also, I have to ask the Lord what the difference is between showing the person their sins and then actually bringing down the judgment on them, saying you're guilty, and then there's the sentence. I don't know. I'll have to ask him about that. Well, at the moment, I don't know the answer. So I showed her her sentence. And then I said, so it'll take this opportunity to give you a 10 days notice. We're canceling the contract. And blessings upon you and your life and your business. And I told Susan, I asked Susan to please send them out the books. Whatever they're going to do with them, we're going to send it to them because that young man needs help. 
So that's the story with infinite media. We have been delivered from infinite media. Everything is quiet in the spirit. What do you mean quiet in the spirit? Well, brethren, it is possible to be conscious or awake in the spiritual plane. I am awake in the spiritual plane, and it's a warfare continuously. Uh, just to give you an idea, as of Friday night, I guess, or I get my days mixed up, as of Monday, I guess, as of the day that I left it with them, that I'm not going to respond to your strong arm tactics. I don't know what I'm going to do with this, with this equipment when I couldn't find, before I found the tech support. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to pay you $300, you know, to do what I can do myself, you know. Besides, it's just wrong, you know, and, and you've turned into criminal con artists at this point. Anyway, um, that night, I hardly slept. One of the things that happens to me when I'm under a spiritual attack is that I get cramps in my legs when I'm trying to sleep. Now, don't go getting carnal on me, anyone that's listening to me. And tell me, oh, I get cramps in my sleep. Oh, take ginger ale or do this. No. <laughs> no. I only get cramps in my legs when I'm under a spiritual attack. I can go for months without a cramp in my leg. And when I get it, I can pinpoint where the spiritual attack is. So don't go getting carnal on me now. And the way it works is that just as I'm falling asleep, the cramp comes into my leg. When I'm laying there watching television, I'm fine. Or reading, I'm fine. As soon as I start to fall asleep, my legs cramp, and my foot cramps. So I have to get out of bed. And uh, I can go for a year without it happening. And it's always associated with a spiritual attack. So that night, where I resisted their strong mom tactics, I hardly slept, because every time I started to fall asleep, my feet, my, my toes twist or some, something, either my toes or my legs, something twists. And I have to get out of bed because I can't, it's very painful. Yeah. But today it's clear in the spirit. It's in my emotions, the spirits, the spirits in my mind. It's in my emotions. What does happen to me that it's, it's not easy living in two worlds is I keep I keep living, I keep living the conflict over and over and over in my mind. Why? Because Christ Jesus in me has not, think of Christ Jesus as a vibration. He, what does he want? He wants their salvation. He, that guy is called. That guy, and maybe she's called too. She's very nice, Teresa. But she's his, his, his enabler, and she's very nice. The Lord wants him. I bet you, I would bet you anything he was raised in the church. I would bet you anything he was raised in the church. Got into fornication, got a girl pregnant, 18 years old, if not younger. Got into trouble. And he's mad at God. And the mother that forced him to do it. Either the mother or the woman. Of course, it's her fault that she got pregnant, you know. She did it all by herself. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? That you can get pregnant all by yourself? <laughs> did you know that kissing can get you pregnant? Did you know that? Kissing can get you pregnant, huh? You have to watch that kissing, right? Oh, brethren, brethren, we all have to grow up, brethren. We all have to grow up. Kissing can get you pregnant, huh? Interesting. So, um, that may or may not be the end of the saga. I, right now, it doesn't look like we'll ever see them again. I really liked them that day that they came here for the meeting and I met them. I really liked them, especially her, but I liked him too. Yeah. I actually was planning on inviting them to our office warming dinner, but I don't think that's appropriate now. I, I, would, I, would, do it. I would do it, but I would be afraid he'd make a scene. I don't know. Uh, I leave it before the Lord. I haven't... I'm going today to put the order in in the restaurant for where it's coming. Uh, maybe I'll just do it anyway. I, I would be afraid he would make a scene, but anyway. So, so I was talking to you about what it's like to be awake and asleep at the same time in the spirit. I relive incidents because it's still in the spirit. What am I talking about? Well, 
they had they're all lit up they they've lost the client that they didn't want they they didn't want to lose this goose with the golden egg that we were going to pay them 240 dollars a month for the rest of time okay that's what they thought so they lost they lost the client they lost the war that they started which is, there shouldn't have been a war um, they were defeated. He was spiritually defeated. Someone like that, that's all pride. You don't just walk away. You're spiritually defeated. I'm spiritually defeated. I lost the client. I lost the money. Uh, and I'm, and I'm been told all the things that I did wrong as a business person. And I, they messed up a lot. Okay. You don't just walk away and forget about that. Your pride response to that. Your pride doesn't like to hear that. Who was she to tell me that? Who was she to tell me that I didn't do the, the right job that she paid me all that money for? <laughs> Who does she think she is? So his mind is, it's all energy vibrating, you see? And it touches Christ Jesus in me. And the result of it is, is that I relive the conversation, or I relive the email. And it's very distracting. I have to focus and control myself to stay in this reality here. Because someone else's reality that he's raging over what happened is pulsating in my mind. So it requires a lot of discipline to live in two worlds at the same time. And living in two worlds at the same time is a part of spiritual ascension. And then you get perceptions the other person is literally inside of you. So you have perceptions as to what they're thinking and what they're believing. It's not 100%, but I'm pretty accurate when, when there's an incident like this, you know, or, or when I don't know what everybody's thinking was, was, but if there's an incident, there's something prominent going on in the spirit. I'm pretty accurate at understanding what they're thinking so that I can anticipate their next move. That's part of being a spiritual person. Your consciousness is in a higher spiritual place than the consciousness of a single person. I mean, that's just conscious in this world down here. So it's distracting until so everything calms down, but everything's clear, both in my head and in my heart center. What, what, I, what do I mean by that? There's no hostility. They're not hostile this morning. Maybe tomorrow they'll be hostile. Maybe tomorrow when he recovers from the shock that I told him off in a very nice way, maybe he'll retaliate tomorrow. I don't know. Because I really, I mean, what, what was I, well, someone else would have been fighting with him. He really didn't treat us properly with the installation of the telephones. I mean, they, he really did a lot of things wrong. Someone else would have been fighting with him, I guess. But I didn't fight with him because I was be between a rock and a hard place. I needed him. And besides, the Lord didn't show me to argue with him. We're not supposed to be arguing with anybody anyway. But I could have told him. Well, I just told him off in a nice way. But I didn't tell him off. I just wanted to get in here. I wanted the phones to work. I just wanted the, I wanted the, the NASs to work so that we can get back to work on our normal business, which is working on these books. We just published Nicole. That came out really nice. That book came out really nice. Conversations with Nicole. It was. It's a deliverance book. You know, we need we need more books for the average person. My books are so deep. You know, so that's a really a really a really good book. It's a deliverance book. Yeah, came out very nice. But I have several books that I haven't worked on a book in weeks. So we need to get back to the to, to our, our daily business, which is a me, we're a media business. We're publishers of media, of, of content, of media media content. If that's the right way to say it, that's what we do. We need to get back to work. So now the problem is the air conditioner, which is we're going to start working on that. I'm going to get something. We have to get a fan to, to blow the air this way and. We'll take care of that tomorrow. So that's my story. I hope that you have enjoyed 
me sharing our everyday uh, business with you because that's what life is like here. We don't just do, we don't just work on books. We have, we're running a business and there's a lot of work to be done and a lot of decisions to be made that if you're not in New York, you may not be aware you know, of, of what's going on here. You know, just getting the place fixed up. Our conference table is here now. The first conference table was lost. A six-foot conference table mm -hmm. disappeared. So Susan's laughing. A six-foot mm -hmm. conference table, they lost it. They lost it somewhere between, um, I think it was Milwaukee and New Jersey. Was it Milwaukee? Somewhere between Milwaukee and New Jersey, they lost our six-foot conference table. Yeah. So it's just every day, it's, it's just something else. Mm. All that we can do is deal with the problems. And I'm on a personal improvement program of not getting aggravated. So when I start to get aggravated, I have to rebuke myself. I have to stay calm and consistent through the whole thing. But the place is beautiful for everybody that can't make it in two weeks. I, Hope that you can get here at some time. Not only just to see it, there is an anointing here, brethren. It's just beautiful. It's just a beautiful anointing here. And I believe that this is not prophesying now, but the next revival is going to start here. It started. It, it, there's the latter day, latter rain movement started in Azusa Street, in one small building. That's where it started, and it spread all over the world. So I believe it's going to start here. And it's just very exciting to think about it, that it's going to start here, as to how it's going to start. It will start with the outpouring of his spirit, maybe in a meeting just like this. It'll come down, and then he'll spread it, however it's going to spread. And the miracles have to come also. So I will tell you one more thing, which is the latest update on, on ministry news. I think that some of you must have prayed for me because when Susan went back to the house, my lungs got that. I took some vitamin C, it could have been that, but I think that some of you prayed for me. So I really appreciate that. My lungs did open up. This body has got to be fixed, brethren. <laughs> it's really a pain. Well, you know, Paul had a thorn in his side. There's been all kinds of debates by Bible scholars what the thorn was that that uh, Paul had. Some people think it was his eyes. It might have been a physical affliction, but it might not have been a physical affliction. And Paul said the reason that he had this affliction was to keep him humble. So if I have all of these problems with my body, it means that they're still necessary so that I don't go flying off thinking how important I am that the Lord has given me this incredible privilege of talking to you the way I talk to you. It means my pride is still too strong and it would give me too much trouble if, if these problems weren't here. And I know that that's true. So the day that my pride is dealt with in God's estimation, adequately enough to remove these hindrances, I won't have them anymore. Paul said, for the greatness of the revelation that was given to him, he was given that thorn, thorn and the Lord said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. So. so we're going Sunday night to Pastor Profeta's church because Robert Tilton will be preaching there. Now you should know, or I'll tell you again, that one of the ministries that we have here is that we are the eyes and ears of the Lord and we go to to witness other people's ministry um, not their not their building when I say ministry but the ministry that's in that that speaks out of their mouth the anointing on them now you might recall that last summer Benny Hinn was at a local church and I thought that was incredible because Benny Hinn used to preach in stadiums with thousands of people. So for him to come to a local church, uh, I knew something was wrong with his ministry. He used to, he used to go to the Nassau Coliseum and have that one, Madison Square Garden have thousands of people there. So he came to a local church that wasn't even filled up 
enough people in the neighborhood didn't even come out when they heard it was Betty and they didn't even fill up the local church, which I think really hurt his pride, mm. I think. So Robbie Tilton is another TV guy. TV and internet. I believe he was on the TV before, even before this big internet boom. He's been around for a long time. He's not a young man. It's yeah. probably in his 70s, my, my guess is. He's been around for a long time. And I've never, I have no recollection of ever hearing him preach. The only thing this man has ever done is, is sit in, at his desk and, and try to convince you to give him money and tell you that if you, if, you sow, if you give him money, you're sowing a seed and this good thing is going to happen to you and that good thing is going to happen to you. And he actually had people giving him money all, all of these years because he's been on television and the internet for a long time. But apparently no one's watching him anymore, so he's going to local churches. We are going, those of us here in New York, of course if you want to fly in and join us Sunday night, you're welcome. We're going to try the spirit on Robert Tilton. And then we'll see what the Lord does with it. We tried the spirit on Benny Hinn. And we found that he had two spirits. I always knew that he had a wrong spirit. So we saw that wrong spirit manifest. I didn't know that Benny Hinn taught doctrine. He was teaching doctrine and it was antichrist doctrine. But then Kevin McGinnis, the pastor that invited him, asked him to preach on tithing. And that was the most powerful Holy Ghost anointing I have ever experienced. It affected me and it's, it lingered, it stayed with me for days. I've been asking the Lord if it was, if it was truly Him and I haven't heard anything. So I, be, I would believe that if it wasn't Him, the Lord would have told me. Because if I, if I was forced to guess, if I was forced to give an opinion, I would say it was Him. It, it was the Lord, it was the true Holy Spirit. Why was it the true Holy Spirit? Because of the message that he preached. The anointing witnesses to the message. And it was the most excellent message on tithing that I have ever heard. And the anointing was the most powerful anointing that I have ever experienced. So my, if, I, if I must make a choice, I would say yes, it was the true Holy Ghost. So the man has two spirits. So we're going to Pastor Perfetta's Sunday night, and we will experience Robert Tilton. It's going to be interesting. Is he going to preach? Or is he just going to stand up there and talk about your seed offering? I don't know. So one, one of the, I think that there are many factors that are holding, I don't want to say, I don't know if holding back is the right word, but the, the revival hasn't started yet. What, one of the reasons why is that everyone that the Lord wants judged is not judged yet. And now, it was amazing that Benny Hinn came to Long Island. We were a small town. I mean, compared to the world, we were a small town here on Long Island. I think Benny Hinn was in Nassau County, Long Island, in the Nassau Coliseum. But we're out in the sticks here. We're the suburbs. And he came to a local church that can hold a couple of hundred people in the suburbs. And now Robert Tilton is coming to Pastor Perfetta, who happens to be in Nassau County, but it, 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 that's suburbs also where he is in Nassapequa. And that church holds a thousand people, but I don't, there hasn't been a thousand people in that church in years. Pastor Perfetta just has a handful of people. I don't, I don't even think he hits a hundred, maybe fifty, you know, twenty-five to fifty. We'll see who will come to see Robert Tilton. I don't think there's going to be a big crowd. And the big draw for Robert Tilton is that he claims he has the prosperity message. Brother, God's looking for people that want him. He's not looking for the people that are following after their, who they perceive carries the anointing so that they can get a lot of money. You have to want God. And you can have a need, if your needs aren't being met, you can say, Lord, my needs aren't being met, I can't pay my rent, God forbid, or I don't have food, God forbid. Uh, so if you have a legitimate need, that's one thing. But to go running after a preacher because you think you want to, you're going to get rich, your heart's not right. 
God seeks the people that want him, that love him, that love his righteousness, that love his word, that love his people, that want to minister, that want to help people. So, so we're going to go see Robert Tilton. In a million years, I never thought I'd be in the same room with Robert Tilton or Benny Hinn. The Lord is bringing these famous, they're famous preachers to be judged by the sons of God on Long Island. And you don't like that? You don't think that's true? You think I'm lifted up in pride? Well, that's your problem because I just told you the truth. One year later, also, well, one year, well, one year later after Benny Hinn, Robert Tilton is coming, and Mike Murdoch came. Yeah. Mike Murdoch has a true anointing. Benny Hinn had both. And we'll see Robert Tilton. I, I thought that was very interesting, getting to know Benny Hinn. He was very open. Benny Hinn was very open about who he is. And he needs deliverance. Apparently he's been very wounded by, every preacher's been very wounded by people. So do you, what, what does that wounding do? Does it, does it kill the first Adam so that the second Adam can prevail in you? All of the pain that we experience at the hands of our friends, you know, that's, that's scripture. At the hands of, I was wounded at the hands of my friends. The psalm says, I could bear it if it was a stranger. I could bear it if it was a pagan or a heathen that did that to me. But it was my very own brother in the Lord that did that to me. That's unbearable. Who can bear a broken spirit? It's unbearable, a broken spirit. That's why betrayal is a worse crime than, uh, than rape. The Lord actually got me out of bed one day to teach me that. Betrayal by those you trust is worse than being violated to the point of being raped. I mean, nobody should be raped, but that was, he showed me a movie, and that was the, the moral in the movie. The, she, the young woman was in the military, and she was uh, gang raped by men in her own company. It was at the time when women were just starting to enter the military. And worse than what happened to her was that her father, who was an high officer in the military, chose to cover up for the good of the company, for the reputation of the company. He covered up the gang rape rather than stand by his daughter. And it devastated her more than the rape. Betrayal by someone that you you expect to stand for you. It's devastating to your spirit. It tears your spirit. Every time we sin, it tears God's spirit. So, what does the trauma do to you? What does it do to you? Does it kill the first atom so that the second atom can grow? Mm -hmm. Does it prune you? Does pain prune you? Or do you stay in the first atom and, and, and just lang languish in that pain and become a bitter person? It's up to you. It's up to you what you do with that pain. Pain, pain promotes growth, if you will let it. If you will mature from that painful experience, you will be a better person for it. But if you languish in that pain, then the, that bad experience will destroy you. And it's your choice. It's your choice. So, brethren, I hope that you were blessed by what I had to say today. I know that the Lord is in control, and um, this is what he gave us for today, in view of all of the circumstances. I feel his anointing here. It helps draw you closer to me, if you know what my life is like. 
But that everybody is, there's a spirit of ascension on the ministry. That means it's possible for everybody to be ascending. That means having overcoming experiences. The anointing for spiritual growth is here. And without naming names, one person that I spoke to very recently, I realized this morning how much they have grown in the past year. It hit me this morning. Another person that I received a text from this morning, someone who, as far as I know, well, let me just say it this way. They, they texted me and asked to speak to me about a spiritual experience that they just had that this person's been in the ministry for many years and I don't believe, I have no recollection of it and I don't believe they have ever asked to speak to me about a spiritual experience that they had, that they had. So I see that as a spiritual growth, that they have this spiritual experience and that they're calling me to talk to me then, that spiritual growth. I see, I see tremendous signs of growth. What does that mean? There are spiritual seasons, brethren. It means the winter is over and it's springtime. All the plants are starting to pop up above the ground. Time for spiritual growth, brethren. That's very exciting. Now, what I'm thinking about, what's coming to my mind right now, is this spiritual movement that I preached on about a year ago. And if I could only remember what they called it, it's something, it's something like this, excuse me, something like the call of the dove, but that, that's not it exactly, but it's something like that. And, um, well, that's, that concept is in the scripture, and a very well-known rabbi wrote a book about it, and I preached on that book about a year ago, telling you that, in my opinion, it was false doctrine full doctrine from the Jewish perspective and that he, that this very well-known rabbi had been opposed by other very well-known rabbis saying that it's false doctrine. But the point that I'm trying to make is that he named the book, it was something like this, the call of the dove or the turtle dove, meaning springtime is here. Spiritual springtime is here. And all the plants and all the grass and all the flowers and all the are coming up and the trees are budding. Tremendous spiritual growth. It's just started and we have every reason to believe it's going to produce a lot more than the beginnings that we've seen now. So this new beginning, I'm sorry, it's not new beginning, it's this other beginning, this additional beginning. We don't say new beginning. The Lord taught us that over a year ago, we never say new beginning because when you say new beginning, that means the other beginning became old and it's finished. But that's not the case. Everything that the Lord has ever started here or in your life, everything he's ever started in your life that is of him will continue on. There's no reason for it to end. He can give us many beginnings. We can have many beginnings and they're all growing, all of them. One, two, three, four, five. They're all growing, all beginnings. Beginnings in many different areas of our lives. So this building is another beginning. And it's a sign that there are other beginnings cropping up in all of the brethren. It's not just this building. Spiritual growth coming forth for all of the brethren in this ministry. There's great growth here. And we'll see how far how far it's going to go. There should be a big tree growing up here. The big tree is righteous Adam in his fullness. That's where the miracles come in. When the Lord Jesus Christ joins to Christ Jesus, that's the fullness of the tree, both root and the root is above and the branch is below. And that's when the miracles start. So everything's growing. You know, we have every reason to believe the tree is about to come into existence and fully blossom the leaves on the tree on the individual people. So that's what came to my mind when I was talking to you. It's the call of the turtle dove. The voice of the turtle dove. The voice of the turtle dove. The significance being that the turtle dove is, is a mute. I think it's a bird. A turtle dove is a bird. It's, it's mute. It doesn't make any sound. 
So the call of the turtle dove, it's that, it's that call, that spiritual call that's going forth for spiritual growth. And there is, there is such a spiritual reality, but what that rabbi, um, I think he was the Gaon de Vilna, I think that's who the rabbi was. What he said, what he said, what, see, everybody's, brethren, everybody wants immortality. Everybody's waiting for the, they, they use different words, the Jews and the Christians, they use different words. But everybody's waiting for the move of God to, to come in and enhance humanity. Everybody's waiting for a move of the spirit and spiritual growth and ultimate immortality. That's what everybody wants. But this rabbi saw the spiritual growth because rabbis and, and, and pastors that have seen revival in the past, they are having trouble. I'm having trouble too waiting for it to happen, but I'm not trying to bring it to pass in my own power. Many are trying to bring it to pass in their own power. And this particular rabbi was preaching that that the power to bring forth the move of God that's going to move us forward comes, well, is coming from science. Yeah. And he actually um, put the moves, the spiritual move, under, under well, make it, he made it less important than science, so that can't be. God and his spiritual move has to be the most important thing that there is, has to be. And besides science, Science comes out of the first atom. It's a, it's a corrupt. It's corrupt. Yeah. It's given us all of these devices that we're benefiting from, that I'm broadcasting to you over the internet, and that I can have a relationship with, and that I can have a, a congregation that's all over the world, and you all have the option to email me or call me or text me. Uh, that's incredible. So we, we're making use of this technology. But by and large, it's not of God. But we're using it until we develop spiritually to the point that we, that you would all be able to travel in the spirit and be sitting right here in this room with me. Because you can travel in the spirit or communicate psychically. All of this is a counterfeit. All of this equipment, this equipment is counterfeit. It's all counterfeit. We only use a fraction of our brain. Because we're separated from God. When, we, when we're reconnected to God, we won't need any of this. Just, just like I can pick up this phone and text you or call you, no matter where you are in the world, we're going to be able to do that with our mind, brethren. We're going to be thinking about you when you're going to hit me. That's very dangerous, you know. Because you'll hear me when I'm mad at you, too. I'll hear you when we'll hear each other, when we're sinning against each other. Well, I just got mad for a moment and then I got over it. Well, the other person will know about it. How will they know about it? Well, maybe they're going to trip and fall. When you're spiritually powerful, your mind causes damage to the other person. You don't have to desire to hurt them. It's that anger that comes out and attacks them because that anger that comes out is Satan. That anger that comes out of you is a, a power, is an angel in you that is given to do your will. It's like, like a genie in a bottle. Yeah. Listen, I talked to you about the Lord that way. I've talked to you about the Insaf, I've talked to you about Jehovah, saying he, Jehovah is the static energy, he, is, he wills it and the Shekinah goes out and does it. I've told you that the Insaf is, is a static energy, he's not an active energy, he's not a dynamic energy. <clears throat> he wills and angels come into existence and, and do whatever they have to do to bring it to pass. Well, we're in the likeness of God. And there's an angel inside of you that does whatever you desire. If you really hate that person enough that vengeance should be taken on them, that angel goes forth and rages for it. Depending how strong you are psychically, 
it may not happen right away. But it happens, and that angel is Satan in your mind. And who is Satan? Satan is the harlot of Revelation. She's the human spirit that turned evil. She is the daughter of the Shekinah. She is the residue of the breath that Jehovah breathed into the man. But she's separated from her source, which is the Shekinah. And she turned evil. And she, she is your Jezebel. Ahab came home, he wanted that land. Ahab wanted that land. And uh, the man wouldn't sell it to him. So he went home and he was despondent. And Jezebel said to him, why are you so de despondent, my husband? And he said, well, I want Nabal's land. I think the name was Nabal. I want Nabal's land. I think the name was Nabal. I want his land and he won't sell it to me. And Jezebel said, well, don't you worry about that, my love. I'll get that land for you. So she arranged for the death of Nabal and his heirs. And I don't know if that's the right name or not. And, uh, and King Ahab got the land. Well, we all have a Queen Jezebel right in here and in here. And she's willing to do anything to get us whatever it is that we want, depending upon the degree of spiritual power that we have. Very interesting, brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. So does anybody have a question for me on any topic at all? I would be happy to try to answer you. As I was saying, I hope that you enjoyed this message. We brought you closer to me that now that you have an idea of what's going on in the office and then when you know what's going on in the office you can pray because I really need your prayers to make all these decisions and and learn how to do all of these technological things right now we're dealing with the router because our network has three devices it's a NAS and a switch and a router so I'm pretty much acquainted enough with the software on the NAS, but I have to learn about the router, several things that I have to learn how to do and, and fix it up. So we've taken a tech support contract for that, and I will be calling, Susan and I will be calling tech support and finding out how to do what we need to know, learning little I'll teach us whatever we need to know. So I need your prayers for wisdom, for running the office, He's a very sweet spirit here today. If you cannot make it to our office warming, I still pray that whoever would like to come, that God makes a way. If you want it badly enough, that God makes a way for you to come. Um, please pray for us. Um, I think we already dedicated the building, but maybe it will be a rededication for the brethren who will be here. It has to have a positive effect, having more of the brethren who are traveling to come here to, to bless the place. But it's a really sweet anointing here right now. A really sweet anointing. And my lungs are fine, so maybe. I guess your prayers, but maybe I just need more vitamin C. I need a new body, that's what I need. <laughs> I need a, a, a renewal of my body. But as I told you earlier, the Lord has everything under control, brother. I would rather have these afflictions than watch my pride get out of control and lose everything that I've been working for for 45 years since the Lord called me. Very sweet spirit. Let's just sit here briefly and see if he does anything else. Otherwise, we'll just 
Actually, technically, we're supposed to end it too. I always run late. <laughs> yes. Rose wrote um, the, I guess the, the person's name with the leg, Naboth. Naboth. It was an end. Yeah, Nabal is the one who was married to Abigail. Naboth. Yeah. Thank you, Rose. So let's just see if the Lord has anything else for us. Well, brethren, I think we'll just end on time today for the first time in five years, probably. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just love you all. I'm very excited for the growth, the spirit of growth that's descending on you all. And I'm hoping to, for the best for all of you to see tremendous growth in this new season. This is a new season, and it's a spiritual springtime. But we have to wait and see what's going to grow in this fertile ground that the Lord has provided for us here. And the fertile ground is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So God bless you. I love you all. Have a great week. I hope to have a spiritual message for you on Sunday. And uh, I just thank you all for being here. Same old story. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs>